Welcome to my latest video. Well, this is going to be sort of a part two or a follow-up, depending on how you want to look at it, to my Real Link review video. This is one of the cameras. This is actually live right now on my security system. I just brought it in here to test it. It's one I just added, so I like to test it first. Seems to be working fine. The thing I want to show you today is how do you get uh, email alerts? Well, alerts in general, I'll go through that a little bit. They're pretty much automatic. If you want to be notified about it, that's a different thing. So I want to get email sent to my iPhone. Well, how do I do that? Well, I'll show you the configuration that you have to do within the NVR configuration to get that to work. And it's not as straightforward as you think it is. I thought it would be pretty straightforward based upon other devices that uh, I have similar capabilities, but it wasn't. And I'll describe a particular problem I had with my primary email system that some of you may have with your email system as well. If you're using one of the standard ones, you know, like uh, Gmail or a couple of others that you'll see there automatically listed, then there's no problem really at all. Well, there is, and I'll show you that with Gmail as well. There is a configuration step you have to do with that. But in terms of getting it to work, it's not a big challenge. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. Oh, by the way, if you want to stick around a little bit later in the video, I'm going to be covering something that's uh, going to be pretty interesting. I've now come up with, based upon some comments that I got, and also based upon some other information that I've read about the Real League system, I now have a better way of mounting these, a more secure way, and one that'll help hide all of these wires, right, that get in the way. And I'll show you that toward the end of this video. So let's get into it. The first thing you need to do is go into the settings. And then in the settings, go down to the third one, which is surveillance. From there, you go into email alerts, hit settings there. What you see here is a configuration, with the exception of some blurs that I put in place, of how I have it configured to work properly for me. As you can see here, you can set it up for Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, and other. The first three work flawlessly, actually. I tried two of them. The Gmail seems to work the best. It automatically sets these parameters, what its actual server ID is and what the port is. It also defines this here as NVR, but you can change it to whatever you want by clicking on this. Then you've got to set the sender. Now, I tried originally setting up the sender as my email address is attached to my iPhone, but that did not work. This thing here requires that you have at sign and some form of additional extension to it. And that's just not the way my email server accepts it. It only wants the first part of that. I'll have to send real link of message about that because they shouldn't restrict it to force you to put the at sign and some ID here because that's just not the way they all work. And then here is the password to that account on whatever service it is. So this becomes where it's sending from. Now you can put the same on recipient if it happens that that is the recipient that you want it to come through that's the one that's attached to whatever device you plan on monitoring the email in my case it does not work so i have the gmail account only for purposes of basically forwarding the messages so by putting this as a sender it'll go to gmail to do the sending but then it will send it to this email address over here that i have blurred out which is my email associated with my iphone which happens to not be gmail I also changed this. Normally it was set for just image. You can do image only, you can do video, you can do text. I like video. And it gives a little clip about 12 seconds long. You can see exactly what led to the alert. Over here you can set 30 seconds, one minute. What is the sensitivity between when it's going to send emails? Sometimes somebody's hanging out there for a little bit and you don't want it to you know, keep sending alerts every so often. Now, if you have this set up properly, if you hit this little blue one here that says test if setup succeeded, as you can see, this one succeeded. When I originally put my email over here, though, it did not. So that's the basic setup that you have to do. Now, once you've gone ahead and set the settings of the email, the next thing you should do is adjust the daily schedule. This is the schedule that I had set up originally. If you wanted to enable something, you click on this blue box and you pick the time frame. This covers a week and you could turn it on. If you want to disable something, you click on this one and then you bring it across and you can gray it out. So if it's grayed out, it will not send alerts during that time, email alerts. If it has the blue, it will. And then the final thing you have to do is decide what cameras you want this configuration to go to. You could set a different one for each camera by clicking over here, each camera you want. But I found it easier just to go down here and say, apply to other cameras on this bottom thing here, and then just copy it over to whatever other cameras you want to copy it to. And when you're done, you hit continue. Now let me show you something I had to do for that Gmail account in order for this to work. There's the restrictions that have to be turned off basically. So what I've opened up here is my Gmail account, the one that I specifically created just to get this to work from the NVR. 
Now, by default, Gmail account will not work unless you make a change to the security configuration. So if you come in here to the upper right hand corner, click on, in my case, as an N, the first letter of my ID, and I go into manage my Google account. Right off the bat, you see a security warning here because I had to turn something on that I shouldn't have normally. And the way we check it is to go all the way over to the left, upper left hand corner here, click on security. And if we scroll down, we'll see what I had to do. Right here, less secure app access. I had to turn that on. By default, it was off. If you click on that, you can actually change it from one state to the next. Originally it was off, I turned it on. And I had to do that in order to get it to work from the NVR. There was no other way to do it. Okay, what I have on the table here is one of the cameras. As you recall, this bottom plate comes off if you hold a base here and you sort of just twist it. This is actually made of metal, pretty strong. And you could mount this directly to, you know, the side of the building that you want to put the security camera on and then just twist this on. And you'll have to deal with all of this stuff as I showed you before, maybe wrapping it in some sort of uh, duct tape or whatever to hide it. Alternatively, you could invest in some of these. This costs about just under $5 at Home Depot. They do sell them. Real Link sells things like this. Considerably more expensive though. I can tell you that right now. If you go look on their webpage for the camera accessories. This was much cheaper, but unfortunately it doesn't directly match up with the holes on this plate. Now, if you have a drill, or even better if you have a drill press like I have, I'm not gonna demonstrate it here, but you could take this and adapt it to this. Now, you could do it this way, which I've seen somebody else online do. You can buy these plastic covers. This is really just hard plastic. It already has the holes lined up for one of these boxes, an outside box, plus it has the insulation pad on the bottom of it. Now you will have to punch the center out so that you can get the wires down through there, but that's pretty straightforward. It is just plastic. Alternately, as I said, you can actually adapt this one. Now, the holes don't line up, so what you'd have to do is drill new holes. And it just so happens, if you look very carefully at this, right here where there's these little extrusions is where you would drill the holes, just off to the center of it. I've marked them with little dots. So I would put that under my drill press or with a regular drill, just being very careful about doing it, put a piece of wood underneath it. Get the holes drilled. The screws you would need are similar to this. These are number 10 dash 24 half inch. Now the ones I bought happen to come with some nuts that I won't use, but it's regular zinc screw, in this case a Phillips head screw. By getting the, the ones that can be countersunk, then it will not get in the way of the camera once you put this on, once you put the camera onto this. But you will need a countersink. So I bought this quick little half inch countersink that will do either wood or metal, and I'll just after drilling these holes, I will countersink them down. And I'm going to put them, if you notice, they're exactly 45 degrees off from the other holes. So I won't even touch these holes at all. And I can mount it directly to this plate. And I can feed, the hole is already here, I can feed the wires into this. And then inside of this box, I can wrap the wires around. Hopefully I can drill through, maybe that's not always the case, but in the case, most of mine, I can drill through the building and come in with the Ethernet cable through here. So that's ideal. If not, these little plugs come with it that you can move around. And I can, you know, if I choose to, I can move the hole, the, the little plug over to the back hole if I showed so desire. And then I can have the ethernet cable come in through here. They do have special adapters for clamping the wire in properly, but that would expose the wire more, which sort of defeats some of the purpose of doing a secure configuration. But once you've done that and you've countersunk them, you can mount this in, put the four screws, and then this will just twist right in place. After you feed the wires through, of course, as I showed before, this can come right through the center if you'd like. Now, alternately, you could have this, the plastic one, and that mounts directly, and then you would still have to drill holes in this. You would have to have holes drilled to mount the original holes that are here. Now, the screws that come with the cameras are not gonna be good enough, so what you'll need to do is further invest into some 8-3238 screws with nuts in order to connect the plate up to the plastic. So either way, you're going to have to do some drilling if you do it this way. Or you could invest, you know, into the ones that Real Link sells and, you know, spend it about five times more than that, and you'll be able to uh, get it done, you know, with their version of it. So I thought I would go ahead and show this, and you'll see it in more detail once I uh, 
installed on my house. Now the other thing is here, you're going to need to drill a few holes here, but the position is not critical. At least two, preferably four holes, so that you can connect these up to the building. There's no holes provided, or just use these two holes. I'm going to probably use these two holes plus two more in the inside of it, just to be ultra secure. Well, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. There'll be additional follow-ups that I'll be doing for this real link security system. There are many other things I'd like to cover on it, including going through the rest of the menus that I haven't covered yet. Some of you may find very, very interesting, but I'll, I'll wait till I have the cameras in a, in a better situation before I do that. And then I may show you the, inst the physical installation of one of the cameras into its ultimate location. But uh, we'll have to see. I have to make sure it doesn't give it away any security issues for my home slash business. So until the next time, if you got something out of this, you know what to do, right?